in the carnivore world, we kind of have a split mind about the subject of snacking. Should you eat between meals, yes or no? And there's a lot of science for not doing it, that including you know, what it can do to your metabolism, insulin levels being raised, all those sorts of things. But also on the flip side of that, you have just the more practical, if you're hungry and you need to eat, you eat because most carnivores at least try for some time to do the eat till you're fully satisfied and not needing to eat anything else. And if that means you get hungry between meals, you eat something carnivore. Fair enough. There's also sort of a third thing about this too, in that there is a place in the carnivore life for snack foods themselves. These are, you know, your easily to easy to travel, reasonably clean, and frankly, have to be shelf stable kind of foods for when you are doing a long distance drive and for whatever reason you don't want to go buy yet another hamburger patty from McDonald's or whatever. I can only eat so many hamburger patties, folks. Once you remove the cheese, which I have done because I'm trying to lose the last bit of body fat, so I cut the dairy out. And uh, without the cheese, the hamburger patties don't hit the same. They just don't. <laughs> Not very satisfying. So in my life, I use snack foods for that purpose, mostly. I try to avoid eating between meals. I would rather just be a little hungry for a couple of hours before I go and you know, have my final meal of the day. So I typically do what is called, you know, two mad, a meal in the morning, and then I'll have a meal in the late afternoon with 16 hours between the last meal of the day and the next meal in the morning. But that'll also usually mean there's several hours in between and uh, I'm fairly active. After I make this video, I'm gonna go to the gym and do some high volume weight training, which will probably leave me hungry today. So there are a number of things you can do for that. There, um, most carnivore food items, the ones we really like to eat, aren't known for being shelf stable. They're just not. Like, you're going to cook a ribeye, slice it thin, put it in a bag, and go to a store or go put it in your car? Probably not. Probably not going to eat cold ribeye. I mean, the fact it's weird. Bacon works pretty well for some people. You can, you know, especially if you're good at cooking it. Like, I cook my bacon in the oven. I'll do a video on how I cook bacon and steak because I think my bacon is the best. When, it, when I make it properly, it's the best. It blows out of the water any other way of making it. And cold bacon is pretty good. It's also very greasy, hard to drive with. And so if you're like, like me, I live in Oklahoma, where out, once you leave my town, everything is 40 miles away. <laughs> like everything, at least 40 miles away. And about once a week or so, once every other week, my family and I head up to Tulsa. And Tulsa is about 95 miles away. So everything is a far drive. And I won't snack on the way out there, but I'll typically snack on the way home. That's typically right at, you know, about the time my body is wanting its second meal. And I'll have, you know, so I'll give it something small and then have something small when I get home. Snacking does have purposes. It really does. It could, because at the end of the day, when are you most likely to fall off the wagon, especially early? In your carnivore journey. If you're early in your carnivore journey, when are you most likely to fall off? It's when you are hungry. I mean, I did a video last week about being perpetually hungry. You're day three, day four of your carnivore journey. Welcome to the new year. And you're hungry all the time. It happens. And honestly, that may not go away for some time. So what do you do? And the time you're most likely to fall off the wagon is when you're in one of those perpetually hungry phases where you're hungry because even though you ate a two pound steak for breakfast, why are you hungry two hours later? It's because your body wants carbohydrates. And the best way to take care of that is to give your body one of two things, protein or fat. And because protein is very satisfying. You eat enough protein and your body takes a while to, to digest it. And it's, it can be very satisfying. Everybody knows fat is satisfying. So what do you do? Well, there's a number of things you can do. I told you about the bacon. Yeah, I suppose you could cook beef and eat cold beef while driving or out and about, but that's not, that doesn't taste good. I mean, you want what you're eating to also be satisfying mentally. And part of the carnivore diet is one of the great benefits is breaking our disordered habits with food. But at the end of the day, it's very human to want something that tastes good, which is why the next thing will be weird advice for some people. You could go get tinned sardines, tinned mussels, tinned oysters. 
you know, can, the canned seafood from the aisle, that's not just the tuna or the canned salmon, which is probably the two things you're more used to buying. Those things are nutritionally dense, but they're seafood, so you should eat them in moderation because of all the problems that come from, you know, eating seafood due to how human beings have treated the oceans. And let's be real, most people don't find sardines that tasty. I, I have them in here in the house, I eat them rarely. I, I, they're very rarely eaten. They're more like storm food, right? Like, you know, the cans I buy will last two years in my cupboard. I live in Oklahoma where we get storms and power goes out and you know, maybe I don't want to open my freezer or my refrigerator for risk of causing things to spoil before the company puts the power back on. So what do I have? I have to have some shelf stable things. Sardines are okay for that. Or once in a while, if I feel like I need the vitamin D, but beyond that, what do you, you're, you're not going to, most people don't want to crack open a can of sardines and deal with all that smelly water. So it's another option. Well, the, if you're, you might think, well, I'll just stop at a gas station. Well, good luck. Have you ever looked at the label of the meat sticks or the jerky? Because the jerky and the meat sticks are what you're saying you're going to get. You're probably not going to go to the hot roller and get the mystery hot dog. You're probably not going to get a piece of pizza and eat like the five pieces of pepperoni off the top of it and hope that that's, you know, going to keep you satisfied. You're going to get the jerky or you're going to get meat sticks. Have you ever read the labels on those things? Yeah, Archer Farms makes a sugar-free one. Okay, there's still other junk in it. Have you, have you looked at the every other company puts dextrose which is sugar maltodextrin which is sugar corn syrup solids which are in like half of them which are, i mean by its name you know that's sugar the point of the carnivore diet is to eliminate the sugar in your diet knowing that all carbs turn to sugar that's why we go to 100 percent animal products so what are you going to do well you can make your own bacon and take it with you you can take the sardines with you there's another option and the one that i like are, and I've shown you these in videos before, if you're not new here, are, my, are the carnivore crisps. I have a link in the description if you want to uh, try them for yourself. These are shelf stable until you open the bag, but you know, one whole bag has 23 grams of protein of, of the one I have here, nine grams of fat. So this one's pretty lean. This is the beef eye of round. I'll put a picture up on the screen here so you can see it. And they do the job. I take these with me those when I go do those long drives because they can sit in the car just fine until I open the bag and then they're easy to eat once I open the bag I mean and if you want crunch in your life they, they're crispy but what do you do you maybe you don't want lean maybe you want something fatty my other favorite my favorite one right now from them is the chicken skin that stuff is ridiculous it sells a bit of a crisp right Got a bit of a crisp. This stuff, nutritionally, I want to talk about satisfying. One serving, and there are five in the bag. One serving is 18 grams of fat. You eat this, you eat 96 grams of fat or 94 grams of fat or something. Only four grams of protein. A little bit of that goes a long way. Pack a snack bag. One serving, maybe two if you need. And a freezer bag. Or a travel storage bag. Put a couple of servings of the beef eye of round in there. What I don't have to show you, unfortunately, is actually another really good one. I haven't had the brisket one in a while. The brisket one sliced looks like bacon. Okay, it's really fatty. It's delicious. I highly recommend. And the only reason I even tell you about the that I'm willing to work with like carnivore crisps is because I actually like their product. And in those times where you need a snack, they help. That's the truth. I'm not against snacking on the carnivore diet. I find also like I'm on a, like right now doing a higher protein, moderate fat kick to try to really aggressively burn off the last, the body fat that I need to lose on my carnivore journey before I can go to eating till satisfied as it, and then repair my metabolism. But there are times where it's hard and I'll show you later, you know, when I finally reveal the, what I eat in a couple of you know, in a few days to show you what it looks like in practice to do what I'm doing. Carnivore crisps do play a part in that. Because there are times where I'll, you know, weigh out my food for the day and go, okay, this will take care of it, but I'm not getting the protein I need. And I'm still a little low on the fat. So add a few carnivore crisps in and boom, I get to where I need to be. It's easy. And I mean, who doesn't like, you know, having a crispy side dish? Why do you think burger places, some burger places and like all sandwich shops offer chips on the side? That crispiness with, with your sandwich always goes well. The same with like, the same is true with your, if you're eating your big ribeye and you want a little crisp. So you get the eye of round or you get the chicken breast or you get the other crispy ones and they're wonderful. They really do the job. 
Anyway, let me know if you what uh, how what you view snacking, how you view snacking in the carnivores and as a you know dedicated carnivore or as a keto person who goes heavily on animal products. What do you think of snacking? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. Just share this on social media. That helps too. I'm Anthony Stein, the Practical Carnivore, and thanks for watching.